thank you and welcome to our spring Close Encounters with Music concert. Since the days of antiquity, wood, woodwind instruments have been regarded as belonging to the world of rustic nature, the domain of Dionysus, the shaded forests of Arcadia, water nymphs in the pools and streams, and lush meadows where centaurs and satyrs roam. Their music appeals to instincts. It is sensual. It is literally the music of heavy breathing. <laughs> String instruments belong to Apollo, the sun god, and his lyre. Removed from earth and heaven bound, ordered, structured, and aware. This is the ever-present tension between our higher, reasonable, sunlit, Apollonian side and the passionate, unreasoning, dark Dionysian self. Satyr, centaurs, sirens are all part human and part animal not to mention the Minotaur. When Stravinsky depicts an ancient pagan ritual, Le Sacre de Printemps, the rite, of, the rite of Spring, he opens with the nasal reading, reedy voice of a bassoon. <laughs> When Debussy evokes the erotic dream of a fawn in La Premédie d'un Fawn, after Malarmé, again the ballet begins with a haunting flute solo. Benjamin Britten outdoes both of them. He wrote an entire piece for oboe alone based on the retelling of six Greek myths by Ovid in Metamorphosis. The first one, most befittingly, is the story of the origin of music. Pan is passionately in love with beautiful Syrinx, the nymph, and he pursues her. She has other ideas and runs away. He chases after her and he's getting closer and closer and just before he manages to reach her, she prays to the gods for deliverance and is turned into a reed. Pan plucks the reed, fashions a flute out of it and plays his heart out. There you have it, the birth of the seven reed pipe. A shuddering thought. Had he caught her before her transformation, he would have had his moment of bliss and we would be living in a world devoid of music forevermore. <laughs> Another familiar myth is that of Theathon who attempts to drive the chariot of the, of the sun across the sky, loses control of the horses, and is hurled down by Zeus before he scorches the entire earth, which explains the Sahara Desert. Or Narcissus, the beautiful youth who falls in love with his own reflection in the pond and wasting away, longing for himself, is turned into a flower. Each of the six short movements will be accompanied today by three classical images, 
which were no doubt familiar to Benjamin Britten and very likely to you too. And the sound of the solo oboe will work wonders transporting us to far away landscapes of once upon a myth. Brushing up on metamorphosis for this concert, I marveled again how for more than 2,000 years it has fascinated readers, inspired writers, painters, from Shakespeare to Proust and Kafka, from Rubens to Picasso, his spellbinding retelling of the myths with the raw beauty, pulsating energy, sensuality, imagination captured Britain too. If the pandemic has left you psychologically depleted, emotionally numb, I have a cure. Ovid for COVID. <laughs> A counterbalance to this Dionysian world will be the Apollonian Beethoven string trio. It is an early work, Opus 9, but already bears some characteristic traits that are unmistakably Beethoven. His special relationship with the key of C minor, which he will use in the future to evoke a somber, solemn, dark atmosphere is piano concerto number three. Symphony number five. C minor. Defiant, aggressive, offbeat accents sudden and extreme dynamic changes, alternating loud and soft, the way painters employ light and shadow for dramatic effects, chiaroscuro, and treating silence not as the absence of sound, but as an active presence in the composition, giving silence a speaking role. And you will hear plenty of that, especially in the slow movement of the Beethoven trio. He certainly has silence on his mind writing this piece. With the exception of the opening movement that ends with a forceful fortissimo, the other three movements all taper off gradually and fade into silence, evaporate. However, there is a marked difference between the vast silence out there into which the three movements vanish and the active, tense silence trapped inside the phrases. Please allow me to clarify using a story from long ago. When I was a child, a mysterious bagel vendor would appear in the neighborhood. And all the kids came running down to buy one. He had them strung on a stick, and they were warm and delicious. One day, when I was munching on one, he said to me, when you finish, bring me back the hole so I can bake another bagel on it. I'll give you a penny for each roll you return. <laughs> he was my first philosophy teacher. <laughs> Got me thinking, does the whole of the bagel exist independently of the bagel? I have no intention of comparing Beethoven's music to a bagel, heaven forbid just to clarify, to visualize the concept. The enclosed spaces 
in Henry Moore's sculptures are as eloquent and inseparable part of his composition the way the silences you will hear today in the Beethoven Trio are inseparable part of the music. The program is framed by a Mozart quartet where Dionysus and Apollo coexist in perfect harmony and concludes with a cheerful Cimarosa oboe concerto. Enjoy. Thank you.